What's up softball players? Coach Dan Blewett here. In today's video, we're gonna go through all the major steps, step by step, in how to throw a softball properly. So we're gonna go through your throwing mechanics, hand position, grip, footwork, fielding, all that good stuff. So if you're new to my channel, definitely hit the subscribe button, stick around. This is gonna be a long, detailed, but really thorough video on how to throw a softball. Last thing to mention before we get going in this video is there will be timestamps in the, in the description below and they're gonna be overlaid right here. So if you wanna jump back and forth through the video, because I, I made this to be a good reference for you, then you can easily do that using the timestamps in the description. So again, this is a big video about how to throw a softball properly. So if you're here trying to go through all the steps, I want you to come back and reference it and the timestamps will let you do that. Okay, first thing, let's talk about grip real quick. So number one, I have a more thorough, full video on how to grip a softball, but let's go over the basics real quick. So number one, the big thing you don't wanna do is have your fingers forked way too far apart. This can put different fi finger pressure on one side of the ball versus the other, and that can cause bad spin, which is gonna cause the ball to meander off target, and you're also gonna lose some velocity that way. So the biggest takeaway, you wanna get a four seam grip, which means your fingers go across the horseshoe this way, but you also wanna have your fingers close together so they act as a unit, rather than being really far apart where they're sort of fighting each other like a bunch of bickering siblings, kind of. So have your fingers close together so they can push through the center of the softball like a unit. Okay, so the next big thing is, just like a car has four tires, right? If any of the, any of the tires are flat, the rest of the car is pretty much useless, right? So when you're throwing a softball, the first thing that matters is your fielding position, but also how you funnel the ball to the middle of your body. And what that means is that when you field a ground ball and you're squared up to it, that you bring the ball to your center here, and you'll see all really high-level fast pitch players do this, all high-level baseball players do this. They absorb those ground balls to the middle, and then they start to move their feet toward their target. So the next step here is making sure that you're really good at funneling the softball. So you can get on knees, you can get with a partner and just bounce, you can use a tennis ball, softball, any of that stuff to work on getting comfortable funneling and vacuuming ground balls into your center. That way, every time you throw, you've got the ground ball or fly ball is gonna to come to your middle too from this safe place where now your mechanics can be consistent because they always start from that same place. The next really important step here is your footwork. So if I'm throwing this direction, my ankle, the inside of my, my shoe, needs to line up with my target. So once I feel the ground ball, I need to go right ankle points towards where I'm throwing, and then left ankle is gonna follow it. And obviously when you're moving fast in a game, this is gonna look like this, where you're already starting to line your feet up, and then you're funneling and you're moving through. So right ankle will point towards your target, and then as you step, it'll be right to left, and then left is gonna to go towards where you're throwing. So again, here, good footwork, right foot steps, left foot steps. This is gonna be really quick, and your feet are gonna stay pretty close to the ground. You don't wanna be hopping up in the air. You wanna move through the ball and go that way. Again, those two really big important uh, steps in fielding are critical for having better throwing mechanics. When I work with players, those are the first two things that I fix, and they alone can usually add one, two, or three miles per hour just because they're in better position for everything that follows the fielding position. All right, the next step in how to throw a softball really well is once we've gotten and we're starting to move through our footwork is our hand breaks. So our hands are gonna separate from the middle, and when they do this, they're gonna move slightly down and the hand is gonna stay on top of the ball. So you don't wanna see your hands break like this, you don't want to see your arms stick way back. You don't want to see your elbow climb way above your head. When you get to the middle and you're starting to move through your throw and your hands separate, your palm is going to stay above the ball and you're going to separate your hands like this. There's not going to be a big down. You're not going to make a big circle. It's just going to be it's kind of like you're cracking an egg on a skillet. Hand stays down and that's everything you need about the handbrake. Okay, the next thing in the softball throwing mechanics is once our hands have separated, the elbow is gonna pull back behind our body. It's not gonna lift. We're not gonna make a big circle. Once our hands have separated, the elbow is gonna pinch behind our body. And the way to think about this is, 
Imagine you're a superhero and it's time to go fight crime and you're ripping off your street clothes to reveal your costume underneath. Your elbow is pulling back and making this big chest as we start to throw. This gets your shoulder blades back and what that does is it connects everything in your upper body to your lower body and it prevents this jumping ahead where we push the ball with a low elbow. The next step after we pull our elbow back, and this is just, it's not really a step, it's something that you need to be cognizant of, is the elbow angle that you have. When you're throwing well, your elbow angle will be 90 degrees or a little bit less. It's not going to be crazy like this. It's also not going to be an obtuse or long angle. We want to break our hands, pull our elbows back, and when we do that, it's going to bring our elbow into like a 70-ish, 80 degrees angle, and that's where we want to be when we're throwing. So when we pull back, we want to think about keeping the ball kind of close to our chest. So don't let the hand be the driver of your arm action. Let your elbow be the driver of your arm action. Again, Superman ripping open his street clothes to reveal his costume beneath so he can go fight crime. That's kind of what your hands and your elbows do in the next steps of how to throw a softball. Another key point to mention at this, at this spot in the throwing motion is that the arm is not going to be up when we're ready to throw. When we go through our steps and we break our hands and we pull back, you'll see the best throwers in the world, baseball and softball, their hand is in this position where it's just above parallel with the ground. It's not in this position when this front foot just touches down. This is too early. The arm should be here and then as the hips rotate, the arm gets thrown up and behind and then comes up over top. So just be aware when we break our hands from here, we go down, we pull straight back. We're not trying to get to the sky and we're not trying to get that elbow to that 12 o'clock position. All right, the next big steps in how to throw a softball is once we've gotten to here and we're pulled back, what does our glove arm do? Well, number one, our glove arm should point generally towards our target. Your elbow can be bent like mine. It can be straight. Either one is okay as long as the upper arm is pointing in the direction you want to throw. After that, and the big thing you want to think about is what does the glove arm really do? It does not point to my target. Really what happens is as we separate, it goes around and then it comes down to this side of your body. So our glove arm, as we start to shuffle and we're moving towards our target, it's going to reach out. I'm still kind of pointing towards my target. But then this glove arm is going to turn, which helps get my hips through, and it's going to get all the way to this side of my body. So we don't want to be doing this. We want to let our glove arm sort of reach out and go around naturally. And one of the silly ways I explain this is, imagine you're petting an elephant. You're going ear to ear, petting a little baby elephant like that. That's what your glove arm kind of does, where it goes up and then it falls next to your side. So another big point to touch on in how to throw a softball is what do our shoulders need to do? So as I'm going towards my target, just like with hitting, there's a lot of parallels between throwing and hitting, we don't wanna be on our front foot too soon. When you do this when you're hitting, you lose all your power because your front side has leaked and your back side, which has a lot of your hip power, is already gone. So when we throw, we don't wanna be here which is one thing I see very, very often when I'm working with softball throwers. We want to be here. So we're going slightly uphill with my shoulders, not as much uphill as like a baseball pitcher or a, a softball outfielder would go uphill. But basically what uphill shoulders means is that we have to have this slight tilt in our hips, which helps keep our weight back, which then when we finally touch down with our front foot, now we can shift all that weight forward into our throw. Again, it's a lot like hitting. When we hit, yeah, we stride, but our weight doesn't just fly forward with our stride. When we stride, our foot touches down, puts us in a good, strong position where we still have weight in our back, and then our hips fire to start our swing. It's the same thing with a throw. Once we field, we funnel, we start moving our feet. Now I need to keep weight in my back hip, and I need to have enough weight where I'm going slightly uphill, where now I can get on top of the ball, and really get some oomph into it and my front side into it. So one drill that I really like to help teach that is called the hot pause drill. And basically this drill, it's very, very simple. You'll go through your throwing mechanics, but only the early part. You'll funnel the ball and you'll hop to this foot and pause. And if you can really stop on your back foot with your hand still at your center, 
then we know your weight hasn't leaked forward. And what most young players do is they get here and they're falling, and that's because they haven't learned how to keep their weight back just enough to then shift it into their throw later on. So the hop pause drill is great where you're funneling, you land, all right, I'm good, then I can finish my throw, and that's teaching me to have a proper balance of weight between my backside and my front side. If you want to throw a softball really, really hard one day, you have to learn just the basics of weight shift, and that means just having a slight uphill tilt to your shoulders. The next thing that I want to cover here on this long video about how to throw a softball is what does your front side do besides what the glove does? So here's the really key thing. Your glove arm is going to determine where your arm angle goes. So a lot of players, they have a weak glove side where it sort of just like falls and it goes way over here and their arm angle tends to slip to the side and then they start to throw side arm, whereas that's not really their natural arm slot. So basically the role of the glove side is to help the hips accelerate open faster and it's also to sort of crunch your torso so that you can get a higher arm slot. So my arm slot is created by the angle between my shoulders. So if I want to throw over top and get good, you know, sort of like one seven backspin, I can't have level shoulders like this and have my arm overhead. It feels, literally, it feels terrible as I try to demonstrate that. Your arm slot is always going to be matching your shoulder angle. So if I'm here throwing sidearm, I'm good. If, I'm, if I want to throw higher up, I have to tilt my torso to get my shoulders to match my arm. That's a really critical thing, and your glove side is what helps your arm do that. Got some, some geese friends here. So as I go slightly uphill with my shoulders, I need to get comfortable crunching down with my glove side. And again, my glove needs to get to this side of my body. It can hang low or it can sort of tuck. Either one is okay but I need to use my glove arm to crunch my torso to get this higher arm slot angle. That's how you really get some power and some oomph on it. If you, again, if your shoulders are level, you can't get your arm up overhead without bending your elbow, and then you're pushing the ball. This is also a good time to mention a common myth in softball throwing that you want to get 12-6 backspin. You really cannot get 12-6 backspin when throwing a softball because your arm is never gonna be at 12 o'clock. It's gonna be at one o'clock or maybe 10 o'clock. And so if my arm is here, how can I spin the ball with 12-6 backspin? When coaches are trying to teach this, they end up forcing players to try to get the task done by bending their elbow. So now if I bend my elbow, I can throw at 12-6, but I'm gonna throw 46 miles per hour because my elbow's bent. The best throwers in the world have long arms at release and this is where they get their velocity, and they still get backspin, but it's not 12-6 backspin. It matches the arm slot that they throw from. So when players say, I get 12-6 backspin, they're either lying to you, or they're throwing like this, which no one throws like this, or they're throwing with a pushy low elbow, which is very bad throwing mechanics. So again, using the front side to crunch and create angle from the torso is critical in getting a proper arm slot when you're throwing a softball. All right, so the last couple topics in here in this video about how to throw a softball is finish and follow through. So number one, players that throw harder than others usually are a little bit more aggressive than others. And personality type dictates this. So if you're a, a kind of quiet, not as aggressive player, you have to kind of work on it a little bit. You have to throw with a little bit of anger to get your velocity up. A lot of players I've worked with kind of just go like this and they don't finish as hard as they should. That's really important. A lot of players get an extra couple miles per hour just from really pulling down and finishing their follow through. So I'm filming this video in Washington DC and the president's helicopter just flew by, an airplane's landing, and you can see the Washington Monument. So just an interesting side note because I, I do live here in the DC area. The last thing, arm slot and follow through. If you're throwing a ball sidearm, your follow through is gonna be matching that angle, so it'll go across your body. If you're throwing more over top, your arm angle is gonna finish at that same angle. So if you throw sidearm, you don't wanna try to finish down here, that makes no sense. Your follow through is always gonna go as far as it can go to the backside of your body, and it's gonna match the angle that you throw from. Whatever it is, your follow through needs to match. Okay, so I hope this video on how to throw a softball was helpful. I wanted to just kind of walk through all the steps because I think there's a lot of misconceptions. 
you know, fast pitch players, they need to have good throwing mechanics if they want to play college softball, if they want to reach their goals, and just learning the sort of step-by-step -step overview of how to throw a softball properly is really, really important for that. So if you're a coach or you're a parent, feel free, leave a comment below. Did I miss anything? Do you have any questions? Does anything need to be clarified? I'd love to I respond to pretty much every uh, comment and question on YouTube. So if you have one, don't be shy about leaving one below. And lastly, in the description of this video, you'll find my online courses for softball throwing, my free eBooks, more uh, articles on my website, my softball podcast, all that stuff. So definitely check out the description for more softball throwing resources. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.